Hey guys, welcome back. This is Two Cherries Instruments. I'm James Cherry. This is a short series I call Stones, where we talk about tips and tricks, how I go about doing things here at this shop. If that's your thing, like, subscribe, do those other things that people do. Today, I have something I think is pretty interesting, and I hope you do too. Um, we're gonna be talking about cam. We're gonna be talking about how I produce in Fusion 360, the cam that I use to run on these machines back here. Let's head on inside. Um, we're gonna do some stuff in Fusion 360 on how I do a cam operation setup for a scarf joint neck. I know we've covered this a couple of times. Hopefully this is a little bit more information in a way that's a little bit easier to understand. So here we go. Okay, here we are in Fusion 360. I'm gonna walk you through what I do here to create the cam for this for this scarf joint neck. And uh, this is pretty, pretty much my normal practice. Um, so here we are, I just have a model of a CNC machine that was provided with these drawings. And the first thing that I noticed is that you need to have a crisp edge on the front edge of your CNC machine. Uh, you can also prop up the neck on a block, piece of block material to, to do this, but it's a lot less work if you just move that over and just ensure that you have uh, a machine with a crisp front edge. Here I'm also doing something that I like to do. I'm just changing the stock material to air um, in the uh, rendering environment. So that gives me that wire frame around it, makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. So now we're gonna start setting up this thing. I'm just gonna import this model into the design we have for this uh, CNC machine. And I'm going to angle that headstock over so that it fits flush on the machine. So here I'm drawing a piece of sacrificial material that we use to align the neck. Um, I, I don't usually do this in Fusion. I'm really just doing this to show you guys what I actually do. Um, I usually just use a, a piece of scrap material that I attach to the bed and mill off using a Mach 3 wizard. But here I'm just doing this just to kind of show. I'm not at the machine today, so I'm just trying to show you how I go about this. So what I've done is I've taken this piece of um, half inch MDF and I've, uh, I'm milling off both faces of it or both sides of the material and that gives me an edge that is um, on access with the machine. So this, these two faces are aligned with the x-axis of the machine and we're going to use those to align the neck in the various setups that we're going to create. Okay, so now we've got that sacrificial material set up. We're going to do our first operation. You can see where I have my origin set up here, and this is key. So we're going to use the same point in all three of the operations. So we'll set up that first one in that, on that um, area, and we're going to make sure that our stock material also has that same edge that's, that's in contact with the sacrificial material. That's also been joined flat as well. So first we're just going to do a boring operation and uh, cut the tuner holes on this thing. Okay, and uh, so now I'm gonna run into my first problem. Um, I generally keep these kind of uh, radius roundovers out of my models as much as possible because when you're doing cam work, they just cause problems. So I'm gonna do a little neat trick that you can do in Fusion here. We're gonna go back to the original model. I'm gonna scrub back through the timeline until I find the point where that uh, was created. I'm gonna remove that component, then I'm gonna scrub back to the end of the timeline and then I'm going to go back into my other model and I'm going to refresh the model. So there it is right there. And I'm going to remove that feature. Okay, now we can go back to the other model and relink to this drawing. Okay, now it's out of the way. Um, also, I like to make sure that the lines that come out to form my headstock are really crisp. In this model, that's not really the case. Um, but I didn't make this drawing. I'm just trying to show uh, someone who reached out to me how I would go about creating the cam for their neck. So um, that's one of the things that you should pay attention to is getting that um, those lines that um, start and stop right after the nut to be really on square. So here we're just doing a contour operation. I've selected the contour of this headstock. Um, 
I'm just going to do a little bit of work here on the lead ins and lead outs after this. I'm just doing a half inch step down, or sorry, a quarter of an inch step down um, with 30,000 stock to leave. And then once I get that all set up, then I'm going to do uh, duplicate that same. Um, I'm going to duplicate that same cam operation. I'm just going to change the uh, stock to leave to zero and the step down to a quarter of an inch. That's then that'll be my finishing tool path. Okay, so we've got that done. Now we're going to reorient the neck again. I'm going to move it up over here with the headstock hanging off the other direction so that we can cut the truss rod slot. Again, I'll set it up with the origin using the exact same point as we did in the first one. I can't iterate that enough times. We, you have to use that same indexing. You don't have to, but you're asking for trouble if you don't. If you index using the same point every time, your margin of error um, drops considerably. Okay, so now that we have that origin set up, we're just going to change the tool to a quarter inch tool. We're going to select some geometries here to cut that truss rod slot. I also like to add, you know, about 10, um, 10 thousandths or so for a little bit of room to, to fit that. A lot of times also I will custom fit a truss rod slot, so I'll step that out until I get a really nice fitting truss rod slot. Okay, and now we're on to our third operation. We're going to reorient the neck again and create another setup using that same index point. But there's a, a little bit of a catch here on this one in that um, that headstock is now completely unsupported. So we're going to draw in a little um, geometry here that we're going to use to create a milling operation for a support material to, for that headstock. Milling unsupported is not a good idea. So that, I know that from experience. So. I'll create this little piece of geometry. Uh, again, I usually just build this up out of scrap MDF and then mill it off um, on the machine. So once we get that created, okay, now we have that part. Um, we can use that geometry to create a scallop operation that we'll use to um, shape the MDF into this support material. So you can see I like to do inside to out, or sorry, outside to in. I'm doing a 60,000 stop over, um, 60,000 step over on this one. So now we've got that, we're gonna set up the, the final setup. That's actually really two more setups, but um, we're gonna first mill, rough mill the back of the headstock and then a scallop operation on the back of the headstock. And then we're going to do a pocket operation on the back of the neck for rough milling, and we'll finish it off with a scallop operation. So it can be a little bit tricky to get these all set up. Um, you can see me futzing around here a little bit, trying to get everything where I want it to be. Um, this is generally how I do things, but um, every model is a little bit different, um, reacts a little bit different, so it's not always the same way every time. Um, but here again, I'm leaving 30,000 stock to leave, and then I'm finishing that up with the scallop operation and the three quarter inch ball end mill. And uh, that leaves me a nice surface finish to do my finish sanding with. You also have to remember that we've already cut the perimeter of the headstock. You don't really see it in the model there, but that um, there's a bunch of material up there that's not there anymore. You kind of have to just imagine that because Fusion doesn't really capture that for us. So now I'm just going to cut the outline of the back of the neck first. Um, and after I've cut that outline, then I'm going to move on to doing this pocket operation. So we've got this pocket operation here. We're just cut, rough cutting out the extra material on this neck. We've already cut the outline, so there's also, again, there's a bunch of material that's already been pre-cut out for us. Um, and then we're going to final, and then we're going to finish it up with a scallop operation. And uh, that's what I'm setting up here, just trying to get some uh, avoid touch surfaces um, in so that I don't have those parts. <laughs> I don't have them cutting into my parts like it is there. Okay, we'll change that to avoid surfaces. And then once we have those, we're all set. So that's really all there is to it. It's a pretty straightforward thing. Um, I hope that explains 
what I go through and how I orient parts on the machine. Um, if you have any questions, as always, feel free to ask. Thanks. Okay, I hope that helped some of you guys. I hope that was something that was really interesting and I hope it's something we can keep doing. I really enjoy this kind of format. It's kind of nice to get back to the roots of what we've done here in the past and I hope you guys like it as well. Thanks for watching. Remember, uh, Starbond has been supporting the channel and there's a link in the description to get yourself a discount on this stuff. Um, I use it all the time. Check it out if you haven't already. Hopefully that answered some of your questions. If you have more, uh, please feel free to ask them down below. I'm always happy to answer all the questions that you have down there. Um, thanks for everything you guys do, all the support on Patreon, and thanks for watching.